Transition words denote only about half a dozen to a dozen core relationships of ideas. Now, that was kind of eye-opening for me when I first realized that because I thought there could be infinitely many relationships of ideas. This is extremely important because every reading exam ultimately tests you on relationship of ideas. That's what they're all about. So different sections from command of evidence to inference to paired passages all depend on you assessing relationships of ideas correctly. In the case of transition words, we want to denote the particular transition words and phrase that denote those core relationships of ideas. So what are those relationships of ideas? They're basically emphasis, compare, contrast, additive points, cause and effect relationships. The next sentence or paragraph might be the result or effect of the first sentence. Could be an example. That next sentence is an example of the previous sentence sequential or perhaps emphasizing and there are a few others conclusion etc that we'll see from time to time as well and some groups will actually suggest you organize them into four specific groups that i've seen for prep on the sat those are generally support contrast cause effect and reinforces in that case usually the support is the additive and the comparison combined into one the reinforcings the examples and the sequential kind of combined into one so whether you organize it for six eight groups i don't think that's the important point the key is know that there are these core relationships of ideas recognize them from the text and then take that relationship to ideas and in this case, we actually have to find the appropriate transition word. And that's how we're gonna solve that. So these questions actually move pretty quickly, unlike the other reading style questions I mentioned a second ago, paired passages, command of evidence, inference. These are fairly quick. Nonetheless, you still have to take the time to read all of it and assess the relationship of ideas and then predict that relationship and compare it to the answer choices. That's how we're going to go about solving these problems. There's no quick way about it. You can't just read half a sentence or the sentence after, or even just the sentence before. I've seen some recommendations say, read the sentence before and after. That's usually not enough. I would suggest reading the whole thing. Let's take a look at a few examples from each of the different relationship ideas. In her poetry collection, Thomas and Biola, Rita Dove, interweaves the titular character's personal stories with broader history narratives. Okay, so the title characters, which are Thomas and Biola, two characters, their stories are interweaved with historical narratives. So their stories take place in a larger context within the world within history. So let's keep going. She places Thomas's journey from the American South to the Midwest in the early 1900s within the larger context of the Great Migration. So he's part of a bigger backdrop in history. Dove sets events from Beulah's personal life against the backdrop of the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. So Beulah, who by the way is a different character than Thomas, is set against the civil rights, another big movement or time in history. So what would the relationship be here? I've got the main claim that all the characters are against this backdrop. And then we've got an example of one of the characters, Thomas. And then we have an example of the other character, Beulah, both set against different sort of historical backdrops. So I might have otherwise said this could be an example. It reads correctly to say specifically, but that's not the right idea. It's one against the backdrop and the other. So I think it's similarly. That would be my best guess. They're alike. I have one example and similarly, I have another example, both of which support the claim. It's not specifically, which is an example. This sentence here is not an example of the previous one. It is an example of the first claim, that sentence, but so is the one before it. So it's not exactly right to say specifically here, if you were thinking that could be the answer. Thus, it's not a cause effect and regardless, which is contrasting, it means despite nevertheless that's not the answer either we have two examples the second example here the underlined portion is setting up a similar example to the one that came right before it 
And that's how we go about answering these questions. We have to assess the right ideas. Notice in this case, if I did not read this first sentence up front, the claim, I really would not have developed the right idea. I probably would have said specifically. Again, I would suggest reading the whole thing, not merely the sentence before and after. So this is a good example of comparison. The relationship of ideas here is comparison. Let's move on to see another. Again, I'm going to read the whole text. I might scan the answer choices just to see if there are any unusual transition words, but I have likewise, which is comparison, however, contrasting, therefore, cause and effect, for example, which is illustrative. So most of the planets that have been discovered outside our solar system orbit G-type stars like our sun. Okay, so most planets, well, they're kind of like ours. They orbit around this type of star, the G-type. In 2014, researchers identified a planet orbiting Kelt 9, a B-type star, more than twice as massive and nearly twice as hot as the sun. So what's the idea here? Different type of star, most around G, but here's a different type that they found a planet around called Kelt 9 is one of the hottest planets ever discovered. So this is an exception. Usually you're around G type stars. I need something that denotes an exception or a contrast here in ideas. So likewise, no, that's similar. However, contrasting, yeah, let's hold on to that for a second. Therefore, no, it's not a result of the previous sense that we have a B type star planet. For example, no. A B-type star planet is not an example of our typical G-type star like our sun. However, contrasting. By the way, denote compare and contrast are two very different answer types with very different transition words. Comparison is likewise, similarly, right? Contrasting is however, although, nevertheless. If the actual answer says John is taller than Bob, that's contrasting, it's showing a difference. Whereas if it said both John and Bob do well in school, that's a comparison, that's showing the sameness. So be very careful to differentiate comparison and contrasting transition words. So let's move on to another example. In a heated debate in biogeography, the field is divided between dispersalists and Vicariancists, not that I know what those really are, there are those who argue that dispersal is the most crucial determining factor in a species distribution. Okay, that's what a dispersalist is, I guess. And those who insist that vicariance, separation due to geographic barriers, is. Biogeographer Isabel San Martin counts herself among neither. Okay. So what idea do we think goes in here? So the field's divided, and then we've got an explanation. We're told the field is divided, and then we get an explanation of one, and then an explanation of two. So the fact that we get explanations following this main claim we're probably looking at something that is, you know, an additional point or maybe narrowing down could be an example, although this really isn't an example. So furthermore, maybe the field's divided between dispersalists and vicariousists. Furthermore, there are those that argue, no, that's actually not right. It's not an additive point. By contrast, definitely not contrast. These are more specific cases of the claim beforehand. Similarly, well, no, it's not saying similarly. It's just a little more specific detail. That is, that is looks right. That's in other words, that's helping to clarify the previous claim. And that's what we're doing, right? We're not giving a specific example. We're just clarifying what a dispersalist is, what a vicariancist is. That's the right idea. So what would this category be? This would be maybe emphasis or in some people's cataloging, reinforcing. Let's move on and look at another one. 
In 1815, I'll do a quick vertical scan. I don't see any transition words that jump out at me that I'm not familiar with. So let's go ahead and read. In 1850, while in exile in Jamaica, Venezuelan revolutionary Simon Bolivar penned a letter praising England's Republican government and expressing hope that Latin American nations seeking independence from Spain might achieve something similar. Okay. So he's penning this to the Republican government in England and he wants independence for uh, what well, I guess it would be today Bolivia. Okay. And from Spain might achieve something similar. So the letter was addressed to a local merchant, Henry Cullen. Semicolon, similar idea. Though, contrasting that for some reason, Bolivar's goal was to persuade political leaders from England and Europe to support his case. So here's the contrast here. It's odd that it's sent to a local merchant because he wanted to get to the Republican government. So though his goal, so this is going to be contrasting. It's not additionally though. Ultimately, yeah, it could be sequential in this sense because I have the contrast and the end goal really is to get to the leaders, not a local merchant. I'm going to hold on to this for a second. That looks pretty good. Accordingly, though, no, it's not accordingly. It's not that it's appropriate or anything. Consequently, it's not a cause and effect. I think it is going to be ultimately, though. So the letter was addressed to a local merchant. Ultimately, though, his goal was to persuade the leaders from England and Spain. That's the right idea. What transition would we call this? Sequential. First, next, last, ultimately, or in conclusion. Might even call it conclusion. Let's try another. In 2009, the Craft and Folk Art Museum in LA hosted a special exhibition, Sueños Yume, showcasing the words of local sculptor Dora Delarios, as suggested by the show's title, Sueños and Yume means dreams, in Spanish and Japanese, respectively. Delarios' art reflects a mix of cultural influences. Her work is grounded in the artistic traditions of both Mexico and Spain. So, okay, this is going to be a further, maybe, example of that fact that her work is grounded in these traditions and that demonstrates a mix of cultural influences. That would be my guess. So something to that effect. In addition, her work is grounded in, it's not really an additive point. I'm going to kind of cross that out, but not definitively yet. In contrast, her work, so wait, this is not contrasting the previous sentence. She's grounded in traditions of both Mexico and Japan that shows a mix of cultural influences. It doesn't contrast with it. Specifically, her work is grounded in the traditions of Mexico and Japan. Yes, that's an example, specifically. Not, for example, not one we see all the time, but actually it does appear more often now on the digital SAT. This is an example or illustrative if we're thinking of the category of relationship of ideas. It's not a conclusion. This last sentence is not a result of the previous sentence. It's an example. Specifically, we can demonstrate her mix of cultural influences by the fact that her work is grounded in the artistic traditions of Mexico and Japan. Let's see yet another. Some members of the U.S. Supreme Court have resisted calls to televise the court's oral arguments, concerned that the participants would be tempted to perform for the cameras and thus lower the quality of the discourse. So it might change the behavior of those in the Supreme Court, right? They're going to grandstand or something like that, right? The justices worry that most viewers would not even watch the full deliberations, only short clips that could be misinterpreted and mischaracterized. Okay, so this is a different point. This is not the same point, but it's like the sentence before it, it's the same type of point. It's the same idea. They both believe, or let's more specifically say, have reservations, is the idea here. So what do we have? We've got one sentence that says there's possible introduction of television in the Supreme Court, 
but the reservations because it's going to lower the quality of discourse and maybe additionally the justices worry that most viewers would not even watch the full deliberations. Another point that's a separate reservation about possible problems with that idea. So however, it's not contrasting the sentence before it. Additionally, I didn't even look at that word, but sure enough, there it is, right? In comparison, no, you're not comparing how alike. Now, sometimes additional and comparison can kind of seem similar. No, we're not doing that in this case. I think additionally is the better answer. For example, that second sentence is not an example of the first. The correct answer is additionally. So this would be an additive transition in the way I categorize it. Now we've seen examples of emphasis, comparison, contrasting, additive, cause, effect, illustrative or examples, and sequential transition ideas. The key is in every case to read the text and get the right idea coming out of the text, which means reading the whole text. Generally, these work pretty quickly, kind of like word in context. And unfortunately, in that vein, word in context, you often, even if you're doing it right, you end up hitting a ceiling, a glass ceiling for many students, depending on their vocabulary level. In this case, depending on how well you know your different transition words, you could hit a ceiling level. So one thing here that's easier than word in context is after you get to know all the typical transition words, start taking a notation of all the unusual words you run into. That's going to help you. It's going to help you push up that glass ceiling. And I think you can do it more easily in transitions than you can in word and context. That's just my personal experience. The other thing I would point out from experience here is that a lot of times people teach, well, if you have two answers that are the same relationship of idea, then mark them wrong. They can't both be correct. That's a typical test taking strategy for multiple choice tests. And that's true with one exception here. If you have two contrasting transitions, don't necessarily mark them both wrong. Contrasting transitions can have subtle differences from experience that you have to be very careful about because they can have particular meanings in context. So it's possible to see two contrasting transitions in the answer choices and one of them will be right. So be careful of that.